All right, so we finally have the A320 board. I actually gave this to Will for a small project he was taking care of back at his place. This is the Gigabyte A320M S2H. We reviewed it in a dedicated video. You can check it out right here. Uh, but I do have an IR thermometer now, so we're gonna be able to track the uh, VRM temps as we put this motherboard and the chip we're gonna put in it, the 3900X, under load. So we'll be able to see just how hot this thing gets when it tries to handle a 12 core. And the way we can get it to handle a 12 core is by flashing a new BIOS. This is the F40 BIOS that Gigabyte has listed on their website for this model board. And you can see it says it's an update for third gen AMD Ryzen CPU full support. And uh, the only real downside to flashing this BIOS is that you're gonna lose Bristol Ridge support, which is like the Athlon, the A-Series, APUs. Like if you're rocking something that old, I, I really don't think you're gonna be dabbling with a 3900X anyway. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, you're trading off something that's likely not to be used in the first place if you have a CPU of this caliber. Granted, I highly doubt anyone with a 3900X is gonna wanna pair it with an A320 board. This is purely because I'm curious and that's it. I also want to see how hot we can get VRMs here. I also don't care if this board dies because it's super cheap. So <laughs> yeah, let me be the guinea pig. You guys don't, don't copy this. Gigabyte's Z390 Aorus Pro packs the necessities and more for your next 9th gen Intel rig, boasting a properly doubled 12 plus 1 phase power solution, stylish aesthetic with built-in backplate, dual BIOS, 8 fan hubs, the list goes on. Click the link below to learn more. So if we're using QFlash utility to update the BIOS, make sure you have updated BIOS to F32 before F40. And you can see F32 is this one here that improves uh, QFlash, QFlash compatibility and improves USB device compatibility. That's really it. I don't see any other need to update here. Sometimes there's like a multi-step BIOS update process. I'm not seeing that, uh, but worst case, we'll play around with it. For sure, we're gonna try to update to F32 first and then see if it will take F40 as is. By the way, if you were asking for uh, the model of this keyboard, it's really cheap, like 15, 20 bucks. I've linked it in the description. I only use it for when I'm troubleshooting like on the go like this. Uh, so it's wireless. It's easy to you know work with USB 2 or 3 and uh, prevents me from having just that many more cables to work with and I can walk around with it. So that's why I use it. All right, we're gonna power it on. There we go. And we're gonna hop into the BIOS so we can flash it. All right, so we're in the Q flash window and we're going to update the BIOS. Click enter, you can see we have two BIOSes listed. We want to update to F32 first, so we'll click that one. All right, and we're now on the F32 BIOS. We're going to update again to F40. And again, don't turn off power while this is updating. And all right, so we're in Windows. I like booting into the OS when we're doing things like this, just to make sure that everything is stable. We do need to update video drivers, but I'm not gonna do that until we swap CPU. So let's go ahead and take out the 1700X, throw in the 3900X, and see if this PC even posts. This is the 3900X. Let's try to get that latched on there. All right. All set up, connect power supply again, power that on. Okay, let's see, let's see if it works. It's power cycling, a few times, Ryzen will do this, someone mentioned that it's gonna train the memory, uh, trying to, to tweak timing and stuff to make it stable. Not sure if this board's gonna do that too many times, but uh, we'll definitely be patient with it and uh, we'll see how long this lasts. All right. We have a post, folks, and we're gonna get the spinning circles. Yeah, we got the spinning circles. Okay, so we're in. We're in. It's probably gonna update uh, a few drivers. Didn't even do that. Okay, well, it didn't update drivers at all. And we're in the operating system. So this is the Fluke 62 Max IR thermometer, and you can see it's got a little trigger on the back. Whenever we hold the trigger down, you can see that laser shows up on the keyboard over there and that is indicating where we're pointing. That's where the temperature measurements are being taken. So right now, what, 27.6 C updates to every 10th degree Celsius, and we're gonna point this at the VRMs throughout this video and see just how hot they get under both idle and load conditions. All right, so right now we are stressing the CPU, FPU, and cache in ID64 Engineer. This bottom choke here is the hottest. I've been kind of playing around with it, trying to see where it's most toasty and Right now we're around mid 70s. I've seen it as high as 80 before, but honestly, these temps aren't bad for VRMs. Like they're not terrible. Could be better, 
but this isn't absolutely horrid. And you see if I move to the second lowest choke, that temperature drops to, I know it's hard to get both the camera and where I'm pointing in focus, but temperatures drop to like 40 C. And the third lowest choke, 30 C, nice and cool. Fourth lowest choke, 30 C, nice and cool. Two chokes up top are between 40 and 50 C for the most part. And uh, yeah, the furthest right up top is about 50, 52 C. Check this out. So you can see our CPU temps there. GPU is not being stressed, so ignore that. But CPU at the diode is that lighter blue color up top, 68 degrees Celsius right now. That's what the stock 3900X cooler, which is a pretty impressive. Granted, we're on an open air test bench, or a makeshift test bench, I'm using the motherboard box, but still. Um, these temperatures, I expected to be a bit higher, even at stock, with the stock cooler. Uh, but it looks like looks like the board's handling it well. Now let's check. I'm curious now. Let's see what our uh, clock speeds are at stock. And yeah, we are pretty low. Let's go to statistics here. So I'm going to swing the camera just a little more this way. And I'm going to drop the ISO so it's easy for you to see. And I'm going to scroll down to clocks. And yeah, so you can see our current frequencies are anywhere between 3.4 and 3.7 gigahertz. This is lower than spec. I would expect all cores to boost to at least four. We saw that with our other beefier boards. So our A320M is definitely gimping the 3900X right now. And this is one of the reasons why you don't want to pair a $400 or $500 CPU with a $50 motherboard. The CPU could definitely uh, boost higher than 3.6 gigahertz. Uh, the, the board is not allowing it to. And the reason why it's not allowing it to is because the board knows that it cannot handle that kind of power delivery. And so you're seeing power kind of alleviated here and back down as a result of frequency. That of course requires less voltage and that means overall power delivery has been lowered. So I'm gonna show you a few more spot tests with our uh, IR thermometer here. We're looking at the MOSFETs now. You can see the laser where I'm pointing, not the chokes, but the MOSFETs themselves, not too hot. We move further down and temperature's actually lower. So the MOSFETs higher up are the ones that are a bit hotter. And uh, by the way, the chokes, if you are interested, the chokes are around 100 C. Uh, I've been checking those out and those get to about 100, but they're chokes. I mean, these are not like, it's not really a big deal that these are running this hot. There's really nothing inside of them. It's just uh, some copper wire. Uh, but the MOSFETs are, I would say on the higher end in terms of temperatures, but there's really, there's nothing super alarming here. Now, honestly, these temperatures aren't as hot as I thought they would be for a board of this caliber. So again, what exactly is happening here? The CPU is not reaching T-junction. It's not throttling itself, okay? It is actually just fine at 70, with the exception of a few spikes, about 70 degrees Celsius under full load uh, in I-64 full load. It's not prime 95 load, but still. And uh, yeah, so it's not the CPU, it's the board. The board knows that it can't handle the power delivery requirements for this 12 core and it's rated boost frequencies. It's it's within spec boost frequencies, right? This boosts up to four point, what, 4.6 gigahertz. We're nowhere close to that. Uh, granted, we shouldn't expect to be at 4.6 all core. That's not what max boost means, uh, but not even, I mean, we're not even at four gigahertz and we were at least at that uh, with the, I believe the B350, we hit that and uh, B450, I've tested it, you guys haven't seen the video yet, but B450 is just fine, uh, as well as X470. And uh, X370 I would expect to be just as good as X470, assuming power delivery standards are in check. Um, you might have a few, again, X and P conflicts and things of that sort. I'm not sure about PBO being included in those new BIOS revisions for Zen 2 support. I'll check that out. I'm sure others have already investigated it. But for now, I can certainly tell you, I could have told you this before we ran this test, that A320 is not a recommended chipset for a 12 core, $500, 105 or so watt TDP chip. It's just, it, it, the board can't handle it. And again, the relationship is because the board cannot handle the power delivery requirements, it lowers frequency. And when you lower frequency, you can lower V core, you can lower voltage to the CPU. That of course lowers total power draw, which keeps this board relatively within spec. Um, I wouldn't say 102 degrees Celsius is all that comfortable for uh, VRM temps, but at least, I mean, at least it works. Like if anything, the one positive you can take from this is that you do have support. Like AMD's promise of platform support, socket support through 2020, at this point looks to be a reality. If you can get these chips to run on boards that AMD didn't even say were gonna be supported, 
then that says a lot about the, the, the socket. It does. AM4 is an incredibly versatile socket. And I'm really surprised that Gigabyte even included support for Zen 2 with these A320 boards. I'm assuming they expected you to use a much lower TDP chip. So maybe like a 3600 would have worked for this board. Um, I don't know for sure, but the TDP certainly suggests that it would. So with the exception of a few things you're foregoing, like overclocking, um, you probably could get this to work on a 6-core, um, on, on a low TDP 6-core, I should say. But for now, uh, yeah, don't do this with an expensive Zen 2 chip. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you want to leave a comment, be sure to do so. Comment section is right below here. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for more cool experiments. Our Navi reviews are coming up very soon. I have been... I've been trying to get all that stuff compiled, but we've got like six graphics cards. We're, you know, we're doing the typical graphics card benchmarks, so that takes some time. Good thing is you don't have to swap platforms. It's just a card in and out, install new drivers, and uh, good to go. So anyway, yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. This is Science Studio, and thanks for satisfying your morbid curiosities with us.